What is up everyone? Night Fury here from Tales of the Tome, going right back into Pokemon Academy Life Forever. Now in the last episode we talked with Hilbert about his parents' death, found out that Team Plasma had used some sort of Pokemon powered cannon to destroy his hometown, and we're getting closer to figuring out, well, who the king of Team Plasma is. Um, Apparently, Nate has been on this trail as well and hasn't been sharing information with Hilbert, so uh, it's not looking great there. Um, we also uh, did a bit of getting closer to Blue. Um, his Eevee finally coughed up Forever Alls. Don't know what that, those will do. Um, the... A gym class has been rough the last few times. We lost against Hilbert and Hilda, and most recently, Nessa and Sonya. Because for some reason this week, the move of the week is Protect. And wouldn't you know it, most of my moves require two hits to take down most of these Pokemon. So uh, I'm suffering a little. <laughs> Anywho... We're looking for someone, apparently. Uh, she. Don't know who that is, but we'll find out, I suppose. Oh, there's May. Right. Trying to make a cake for Dawn's birthday party. Hey, May, got a question for you. Sure, Hiccup. What can I do for my second favorite taster? You've heard about Dawn's birthday, right? Yep, Leaf invited all of the do old Dorm 251 to come. Well, I was actually trying to think of what a good present would be, but uh, I'm kind of tight on money. So I thought maybe I could make the cake. I'm not half bad at cooking myself, but I don't have like any ingredients or cooking tools. I was wondering if you knew where the best place to go for that stuff would be. Oh, that'd definitely be the cooking club. We have a cooking club? Yep, it was only started a week or two ago, I think. Anyway, they have ingredients, ovens, stoves, all that stuff, and it's all completely free to use for club members. Well, that's where our tuition is going, I guess. I'd want to join myself, but, um... Oh no, there she is. Whoa! May Birch, get back here and give go over your footwork one more time! Jeez, from what I've been hearing of the Coordinator Club, it sounds like their training has become as intense as the battle teams. At least we only train on specific dates. Speaking of which... Where would I find the cooking club? Maybe the kitchens? Hey, did I hear you mention the cooking club? Hmm? Yeah, hi? Don't think I've ever seen you before. I'm... Okay, what should this girl sound like? She pumped really hype. Um, you're Hiccup Knight! Duh, everyone knows you! I guess I did kind of stand out. My name's Mallow Plu Plu. And I'm the sous chef of the cooking club. Alola! Mallow makes a rainbow gesture with her hands. Alola? Like the region? It means hello in the old Alolan language. The region was named after our word for hello. How dumb. That's because we're famous for our hospitality. Alola is a fantastic place to visit your, your over summer break, you know? And not just because of the gorgeous weather. The Aethers Foundation got an amazing internship program. The girl's enthusiasm is kind of infectious. I suspect she might work for the Alolan Tourism Board. And if she doesn't, they should hire her. Sounds pretty great, but you mentioned the cooking club. Or I did, anyway. Oh, right. Owie. I got so excited to sell you on Alola. I completely forgot why I was here. We at the cooking club would love to have you. I'd love to check it out. I'm part of the battle team, but it would be fun to drop into the club once in a while. Right now, though, I'd like to make a cake for a classmate of mine. Don Burlitz. You mean the one who... Hmm, I don't know that. I don't think I know that name. Mega Altaria fought my Pikachu. Oh, right. You know, I was really surprised to see another of your Pikachu. I thought they were all extinct. Wait, you know something about my Pikachu? 
I sure do. Every Alolan does. Really? Well, actually, I guess some younger people might not know. But I'm really into Alola's history and lore and stuff. And I just love sharing my passions. So, getting to share my love of cooking and my secret knowledge of your Pikachu is like a dream come true. It's like a warm day on a Cali's beach. Sure. Uh, so, will you? What do you give me for it? Ah, oh, jeez. Look, I, I'm kidding. We're Alolans and we're famous for generosity. I'll give it to you all for free. Oh, wait, wait. Just drop by the student center after class today, okay? I'll tell the head chef to organize a meeting of the cooking club. Wow, thanks. That's really kind of you. Thanks a lot, Mallow. That's just how we Alolans are. I'll see you later today. Alola! What a nice girl. Maybe I should look into this Aether Foundation internship program she mentioned. If all Alolans are as nice as her, it might be a really great way to spend a summer. Right. Anywho. Uh, yeah, let's just hang out at the scheming table. You chat and nothing happens. Points are given. Hooray. Alright, my level cap is pretty high for Ghost. Do I even need it to be that high at the moment? Um, I am specializing in bugs, so or ghosts. So let's go to ghost class anyway. Whoa, Ethan, are you all right? What? Do I look tired? Yeah, man, I'm fine. <laughs> um, what does Shadow Tag do again? No, not that one. Do I even have a shadow tag? I may as well craft items. An actor is nothing without their wardrobe. It is not, is it not true? Let us see what you might have interest in making in this class. Oh, a spell tag is quite effective, no? No, simple paper, but it boosts the power of ghost type moves by 10%. Yeah. You chant ominous Latin words over a piece of paper, creating a spell tag. You feel a bit silly, but also cool at the same time. Ooh, this, ah, this, ooh, this, ah, this. The class passes swiftly as you craft the item. Alright, now, let's give that shadow tag. Where is it? Oh, spell tag. To ghost light. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Like, hmm. Let's give this to Tarantulas. Yeah. Professor Cherry's just been staring at us for the past three minutes, holding a sheet of paper tightly in her hands. Wait a minute. I've been spending a while investigating her, so I've started to learn a bit about how she presents herself. And right now, she's scared. Her hands are shaking. Hey, Leaf. Uh, yeah? I've never felt more prepared for a test before in my life. What about you? Uh, yeah, I feel pretty prepared. Why are you asking? Just curious. It's time. This isn't a midterm or a final exam or anything of that nature, so don't stress out about it. Lead by example, Professor. But on the other hand, it's obvious to see how much she cares. I hope I don't let her down. Yeah, just in case, I'm gonna save really quick. Just in case. I probably should have been save scumming these tests a while ago. All right. One last thing, if you see a move or ability you don't recognize, you're allowed to use your phones. There's no shame in looking it up. Hmm, that's nice. I've memorized most moves and ability, but it might be a nice refresher for the other students. Oh, thank God. Take out your writing implements, students. Remember, this test is graded. Take it seriously. All you need to know is that the opponent 
Togekiss does not have Hustle or Serene Grace. Cool, I don't know what either of those are. Okay. I give up. I don't I don't even know. I'll just I'll just take the L. I don't get it. I'm sorry, Professor Cherry. I really tried. There's a pregnant pause as the last person stands up and delivers their paper to Professor Cherry's desk. You can leave now if you want. None of us are moving an inch until we know how we did. That's right, Doc. I even went to sleep early the past few days, so I wouldn't be exhausted for the morning lectures. Coming from Flannery, that really means a lot. I studied harder for this test than I ever have before, Professor. Professor Oak's quizzes have always been a touch, been a bit touch and go for me, but I didn't want to let you down. I, I really appreciate everything you've done for us, and, um... I didn't want you to feel like your efforts were wasted. So, so I paid attention. I actually cared about what was being taught and I, I think I did all right. You've been building us this up all week, Dr. Cherry. Now, no way we can just go to sleep and find out our grades tomorrow morning like normal. You are all excellent students. I hear you loud and clear. Let the grading commence. Yeah. Great. And of course, you know what I hate? You know what I hate about these tests? Is I don't get any feedback on why I failed. Right? It's just a, good luck, here you go, didn't pass, oh well, sucks to be you. Flannery Moore. Passed. Hilbert Von Schwarzdragon. Passed. Whitney Milton. Hang on, I'm assuming that's passed, yes. Leaf Green? Passed. May Birch? Passed. This goes on for a while with Professor Cherry reading the names of all of the students who passed. Occasionally she will flip a page over and just wince, skipping to the next test. You notably do not hear your name. Incredible work, everyone. I'm so proud of you. Over 95% of you passed. That's extremely good for this class. But for any class, really. I knew you were all great students. We couldn't have done it without you, Doc. Yeah. Great. Tomorrow, we'll do something special. Bring your best battling Pokemon to class, okay? I'll see you all then. By asking around, you are able to find directions to the cooking club's club room. <sighs> huh? This club room looks almost exactly like Mom's kitchen in Pallet Town. Just with way more expensive equipment. Alola! Welcome to the cooking club! Happy to be here. Where is everyone else? Hmm. This is it. Oh wait, it's is it just you? Um, the shed hef is the hef. The other person's here. I can't be bothered with words right now. Oh right, you said you were the sous chef. That means second in command, right? Oh good. So you know about the kitchen. My mom used to rope me into the cooking stuff. She'd put on a fancy Colossian accent and refer to me as Senor de Chef. Wow, that's very wrong, but it's still cute. Yeah, we had fun. Alright, this music is a little loud. Anyway, so, uh, mind if I get started? 
I think I can handle a basic cake. Oh, like, um, alone? Yeah, no? Great, I'm happy to help. It's no problem. An Alolan will always help someone in their home. I think she might be a bit lonely. No wonder she tried so hard to get me to join. Okay, so this is the oven. This is where you put the cake after you've mixed the ingredients together. In order to do that, you're going to want to whisk. I know what an oven is, and a whisk. Despite Mallow's clear disbelief in your cookery skills, you eventually manage to make a fairly decent cake that should serve about 20 people and put it in the oven. You eventually... Despite Mallow's clear disbelief in your cookery skills, you eventually manage to make a fairly decent cake that should serve about 20 people and put it in the oven. You have to admit that Mallow clearly has more experience in the field than you, but you manage to hold your own. Wow, you actually know what you're doing! Told ya! I'm sorry, I've just never known a guy who could so much as boil an egg without burning it. That's... terrible. You think back to some of the breakfasts you had back in Dorm 151 where you were quickly appointed the only person in the dorm who can make a satisfying meal. Probably accurate more often than not. Anyway, the individual layers should each take about half an hour to cook, so we've got some time. Maybe you could tell me more about my Pikachu now? Sure, I've got to say, I'm surprised he's such a cute and friendly little guy. He's nothing at all like the folklore says. Beg a pardon? Huh? Oh, you don't know. That's practically the title of my autobiography. I don't know. Oh. Maybe I shouldn't tell you this, then. I'm not sure it's worth... It's something you'd want to hear. Hey, maybe not, but we're at school to learn uncomfortable truths, right? Lay it on me. Okay. So, you may know Alola is a part is a proud nation of four islands. Thousands of years ago, each of these islands had a king. Sure. These kings had an had a pact of protection with each other. If any of their islands would be attacked, then the other kings, their armies, and their partner Tapus would come to their aid. Oh right, the Tapus are the guardian deities of the islands. FYI. I know. Oh, do you know Alolan folklore as well? Nah, but I know Pokemon. The Tapus are way more than just Pokemon. My bad. It's alright, we Alolans are famously forgiving. Anyway, this was shortly after the Third Univin Civil War, when the kings of Unova were overthrown. Uh, sorry, I'm missing some historical context. Oh, well, I don't really know much about their history. I think they had two dragons fight each other. And the dragons ruined the country, so the people got angry and overthrew the kings. Oh, I think I heard about that. And then they installed a president, right? And then that president had a Pikachu-like shock jaw. That's right, and everything was fine for a while. But as the Univans cycled through presidents, their policies changed. And then, boom, the Univans invaded. Huh? Who? Alola, of course. Oh, there were a bunch of factors, but basically the Univins wanted our land to create banana farms. The biggest thing was that we had f kings, though. The Univins didn't like that. Were your kings, like, corrupt or evil or something? They're historical figures, so it's hard to know objectively, but nothing in our history says they were. So the Univins attacked our shores, intent on liberating us from our kings. Our kings rode to meet them, astride their water-type Pokemon. There are partner Tapus behind them. They knew they didn't have a chance. The Univans were backed up by an impossibly large force of Liberation Pikachu. Right. From what the kings knew, the battle was a foregone conclusion. The Liberation Pikachu had strange and unnatural powers. They could copy the abilities of their allies and even their enemies. They could summon warrior spirits to aid them in battle and were even able to strike with the force of the mega-evolved Pokemon from Kalos. So, they thought they'd already lost when they rode out to fight the Univan Navy. Yep, but the deities urged them to fight anyway, so they did. And this is the strangest thing. 
During the fight, apparently, none of the Liberation Pikachu used their powers. It seemed as though they were entirely unwilling to fight, or almost like they couldn't for some reason. Really? They just refused to fight? That's what the folklore says. So, then the Guardian deities absorbed their Z power from the kings and turned into four giants, glowing golden guardians of Alola. The story says their legs straddled the islands like a colossus. The shadow of the colossus. Okay, so is this the part where history becomes mythology? Or... Oh no, this really happened. Well, I believe she thinks it happened. And then, with a single mighty blow, the four guardians wiped out 75% of the attacking Univan navy. Good for them. And what about the Liberation Pikachu? Well, the Univans were coming by boat, and um, Pikachu can't swim super well, so... Oh! The ones that survived didn't have enough of a breeding population left, and um, apparently when two Liberation Pikachu breed, there's no guarantee that the resulting Pichu will even become a Liberation Pikachu. So, so that's how they went extinct. Yep. Is this the part where you say, we Alolans are famously good at winning wars? Huh, <laughs> no, I'm proud of my home region, but I'm not that callous. Sorry, little guy. Just give him a scratch behind the ears. He'll forgive anything after that. Oh, okay. Scritches. Oh my gosh. I haven't had scritches behind my ears in ages. Thanks for letting me take talk your ear off. Hey, I think I benefited more. I didn't know any of that stuff about Shakja. Sonia's got, Sonia's got the biology part covered, but I was completely lost on the history part. I'm serious. I never get the chance to talk to anyone about Alolan history. Or cooking, actually. <laughs> there was an incident a few years ago where... And now there are barely any Alolans at this school. And Instructor Olivia just depresses me. Plus, I can't get anyone to join the club. I mean, you can see how much activity the club gets. We've been here for hours and nothing has happened. Really? What about the head chef? He has a lot going on. He doesn't often show up. It's been a couple weeks, though, so hopefully we'll get to see him more later when he clears out his schedule. I swear, if the head chef isn't Brock, I'm going to be upset. I think he has a few too many hobbies, but he's the best chef I ever met, so I'm willing to put up with it. And he somehow secured the funding for this massive club room and all the ingredients, despite the fact this is a club of one person. Well, I'll have to drop by to keep you company once in a while. Don't want all this funding to go to waste. That'd be great. It's not like we're hurting for funding, but we always have a selection of poke treats that we sell to other students. The head chef makes them himself. Oh, you're free to buy some yourself, of course. Poke treats? They're a special kind of food that lure wild Pokemon of a specific type to your location. They're not edible by humans, though. Don't try it, no matter how delicious they smell. Would you like to see our collection every poke treat is a thousand dollars but last a long time no matter how many pokemon you attract or how long you stay out sure yeah if it can help me get some more ghost types uh pixie sticks made from real pixies um, normal, fire, water, electric, grass, ice, fighting, dunno, ground, flying, psychic, dunno, Ro soul food. I should have known. Uh, yeah, I'll get a couple of those. Yeah. Great. Want any more? Uh, nah, I'm good for now. All right. If you ever change your mind, though, just come back here to the student center. I'll usually be in the kitchen. Oh, your cake is done. I guess that means you're leaving then. What are you talking about? I've still got, I've still got to decorate it, don't I? I'll be here for at least another hour. 
Come on, give me a hand. Right, okay. What was I gonna do? I was gonna do some. Oh yeah, I wanted to check with Janine really quick. Check my levels. Huh? Oh, you wanna check in, huh? You should have a team of level 20 Pokemon. Your highest level Pokemon is 22. You're good. Thanks for the advice. Okay, really? Oh yeah, they are all level 20. I guess I'm right on track. Uh, hmm. Who do I want to hang out with? I've got some time, so I could do one scene. Let's do... Let's do Sonya. And rank up with her. Yeah. Uh-oh, she's angry. You walk into the research center looking for Sonya when you suddenly hear a humming her humming a little song to herself. She's looking closely at a glowing red rock on the countertop. Or, wait, no. You suddenly remember that Sonya said what Sonya said about wishing stars and how they were not rocks but biological matter. Her brow is furrowed in concentration and even her breathing is light. Wait, biological matter. Does that mean like this is cr concentrated blood or pus or something? You try to subtly make your presence know without startling her. Ahem. Ahem. Right? I can hear you, you know. Oop, sorry. Just give me a tad. I feel like I'm on the verge of something quite important here. Oh, I know, Yamber. Entertain our guests, will you? Lum, lum. <laughs> Shockjaw jumps off your shoulder and bounds up to Sonia's Yamper, showing a surprising amount of affection. The two run in circles around the lab, sniffing each other. That's cute. I didn't know Shockjaw liked Sonia's Yamper so much, though. Wonder what that's about. Maybe they'll become friendly during some of the times I dropped Shockjaw off for study. Or maybe they became friendly during some of the times I dropped Shockjaw off for Sonya to study. Great, right, I think I'm at a good stopping point. What's up with those two? Oh, just standard electric type polarity attraction dynamic. Oh, yeah, of course. That was going to be my first guess. It's something they teach in electric type class. Could you give me a quick rundown? Simply put, electric type Pokemon are some of the best at transferring power between each other. You might not you might know that many Pokemon with the ability plus or minus are electric type. So just being in each other's presence powers each other. Some Pokemon are so good at sharing energy, sharing power between themselves, they effectively become a singular entity. Magnemite, for example. Kobokani and Plusle and Mining battling together can have can even share thoughts, feelings, and damage between themselves. The two of you watch your electric types playing around for a while. In any case, electric types are most prone to cross species friendships. I suppose one could say it's easy for them to communicate. Look there, Shokjo's headbutting Yamper's neck fluff. Is that where Yamper stores its electricity, like Pikachu's cheeks? Not quite. Yamper can't actually store the electricity it generates. When it runs, it generates electricity, but you can see sparks fly off of it. Whoa! Is that alright then? For you to have your Yamper in this laboratory? Of course. Come here, Yamper! Yamp, yamp! Look here, see? He's got little rubber wellies that keep him grounded. Oh, that's adorable. Arguably, I'm more of I'm more of a static hazard than Yamper is. I should probably be wearing a hairnet, but Professor Oak doesn't keep any in stock. And he leaves coffee rings on the delicate equipment here anyway. I'm pretty sure anything in this lab could be replaced at the snap of his fingers. Well, except you, of course. You're the only liberation for Pikachu, after all. I wanted to thank you, by the way, for letting me study Shokjo. Hey, thank you for studying him. I wouldn't know nearly as much about 
how he works if you hadn't given me that head start. I only understood a little bit of how they worked back then. Don't worry yourself about it. It was my pleasure to help in whatever small ways I could. On that line of thought, is there something I could do for you? Nah, just came in here to talk. Ah, well, I'm not sure if there's anything I could talk of that'd be interesting to you. Why would you do that? Why do you do that? Huh? You're a researcher working in a groundbreaking field. You're a skilled battler and one of the best on the battle team. You're a reliable senior to all your classmates. You're amazing, Sonia. You're personal friends with a champion, a gym leader, and a supermodel. It seems like everyone but you realizes how amazing you are. Uh, c come on, lay off. It's not right to tease a lady like that. Wait. Your best friends are a champion, a powerful and popular gym leader, and a supermodel, and your grandmother is a world-famous Dynamax researcher. Y yes Janine's a good captain, but she's a bit terse and doesn't throw compliments out very often. So I guess that leads me to ask you... Have you ever had a compliment directed directly at you? Of course! <laughs> Don't be daft! What was it? Uh, well, you just said I was amazing. Okay, besides me. Uh, um... <sighs> Well, no wonder you're having such a tough time, then. Even your crowning achievement, the studying of the wishing stars, just got a bunch of angry geologists on your back. Put like that, it does sound like I've had a rather rough run of it, I suppose. Well, that sucks, but I know just what to do. You get very close to Sonia and look her directly in the eyes. He Hiccup? You're intelligent. Honest, some of my work is pretty derivative of you're an excellent battler. Most of it is just remembering type matchups compared to you're funny. Funny? Now that's a laugh. I'm so awkward. I, you're a good friend. How good a friend can I be when I, you're beautiful? Now hold on. Ness, you're ambitious. Leon, this goes on for a while. Eventually, Sonia stops protesting, having melted into a thoroughly mortified puddle, draped over a lab table, begging weakly for you to stop. You doing all right there? Eesh. Yeah. Cool. Th thanks. I think somewhere deep down, I might have needed that. Not so deep. Everyone needs to be told how awesome they are once in a while. Maybe you're right. We're not done yet, though. W what? No, I, I really must insist that you stop, lad. I'm your senior somewhat, and I insist that you quit bothering me with these... These aggrandizements. Sure, I wasn't going to be the one to say it. You are. Beg your pardon? Say something about yourself that you like. Give yourself a compliment. Oh, well, uh, my grades are decent enough. I already said that one. I said you were intelligent. Something I haven't said. Besides the fact grades are only somewhat correlated with telling intelligence, you can't possibly expect me to do that. You've already complimented me every which way possible. Nah, I'm sure I missed a few things. Go ahead. I honestly can't think of anything. Well, there is that. I suppose you wouldn't want to say that. Ahem. <clears throat> I have, in my own opinion, a rather nice chest. Ah. <laughs> there we go. Now it's your turn to brush like a little schoolgirl. Well, I mean, I'm not going to deny it, but... Yeah, I wasn't going to be the one to say it. Oof. Well then, I won. I guess you did. Good job. May I confide in you something a bit silly? Of course, go ahead. 
I was often compared to Raihan and Nessa in terms of my looks. Sometimes even Leon. Okay, I can see that. They're both pretty showy and... Beautiful, yes. Their skin is clear and perfect. Their bone structure is immaculate. They're... Well, you know. Raihan may be broader than a barn and Nessa may have a stomach flat enough to sharpen a sword on. But I do have my own advantages. Actually, it was Nessa who pointed out that I could flatter myself a bit more than I did. Much of my wardrobe before then consisted of my grand's hand-me-down floral dresses and cardigans. Uh, one day she sat me down and told me that she wasn't going to let me dress like an op anymore. A what? I used to feel like I was just wearing a costume, like I was dressing as someone I'm not. Raihan told me that's how everyone feels. He told me that's what fashion is. Sure, your understanding of both Raihan and Nessa deepens. So, that's that, I suppose. If you'd ever wondered if I was aware of how my outfit fits, uh, I'm not. I have difficulty feeling proud of much, but well, there are some things I'm quite confident about. <laughs> This is a new side of you. Oh bother, I probably shouldn't have told you that. That gosh darn frenergy. I'd like to think it's just my inoffensive charisma. As Sharon breaks down the door for me stealing his lines. Oh, get on out of here you cad. I'm busy unearthing the mysteries of time and space. I've no more time to talk about boobies. Alright, alright, I'm going, I'm gone. your head on straight, Sonia. You have no time to be fancying your juniors. Focus! Oh, hello? A job offer? From Macrocosmos? Your heart shifts as you feel your relationship with Sonia evolve from friend to junior. Duh. All right, who should I text before bed? Where am I at with everybody? Um. Oh yeah, I guess I didn't. Um, Sabrina because of class. Yes, open my mind, please. Hello. Thank you, Sabrina. Thinking back and forth, fall asleep. Okay. All right, I think that's a good place to stop for now. This week definitely isn't nearly as long as the last one, but um, uh, it is taking a bit of time. So for now, I'll just leave it here. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to our patrons who helped to sponsor the channel. Um, if you want to play this game for yourself, Link to the Discord server where you can download the most recent version of this game is available in the description. And if you would like to be a patron and support this channel yourself, beyond what YouTube does, um, you can do that at the Patreon link down in the description for a very small fee. So, with all that being said, um, remember to like, comment, subscribe. We'll finish off the week here probably in the next little bit. But for now, uh, we're just going to try a little bit harder with the tests, and hopefully I get better at them. I don't understand why the crit hit ratio thing didn't work like I thought it would. I'm sure someone in the comments will probably tell me what I did wrong. They usually do. Anyway, I'll talk with you all later in the next video, and that, as they say, is that.